Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends, this is Gunjan here. Welcome to the second episode of my Attacking Chess Gambit, where we are going to look at very aggressive and tricky Charlie Gambit against d4, which you might use as a complete surprise weapon in the tournament practice. The opening arises after the following model, d4, e5, and now by force, if white has to keep his advantage, then he has to take on e5. White can try other moves, but it does not prove anything critical, as after d5, black can simply respond with bishop to c5, and it's black who is already ahead in terms of peace development, where if you compare with knight to f3, which is even worse in this position, as after e4, attacking the knight, doesn't matter wherever this knight goes. After d5, I think it is black is dictating the game with the space in the center of the board. So all in all, considering all these facts, here white has to take on e5, and after that, the Charlie Gambit springs to the life with the move d6. At this point, white has two options, whether to take the second pawn or completely decline it with either the move bishop to f4 or knight to f3. Let's first look at what happens if white accepts the second pawn with e captures d6, which in fact more often played from this position. And now you see the point behind sacrifice a pawn as black get this free piece development and if any time white commit himself with the move e4, then this position will be directly transposed into the Alpin Blackburn Gambit, which I have already covered in the first part. So if you haven't checked it out, I do recommend you my first part, where I have recommend same kind of setup against the move e4. Now, once again, I want to stress two important points. Number one, there is hardly any theory in this opening. That means you and your opponent are thrown to their own resources just in the opening. And the second and most important point you have to remember, just like our E4 lecture, the overall aim of the black camp is to castle on opposite side and then launch devastation to the white king which clearly compensate the deficit of extra pawn. Now to illustrate the power of this position, I like to demonstrate a model game between two 2000 plus rated opponent which will not only give you a clear path how black should continue but it also highlight the important attacking and tactical ideas black can launch against white camp. In the game, white continue with knight to f3 and obviously black respond with bishop to g4. And again, if white play the move e4, then it will transpose to the e4 gambit. So in this game, white indeed continue with e3, not allowing black to give him a double pawn. Okay, now both the side complete their peace development. Knight to f6, knight to c3, knight to c6, and bishop to e2, planning to castle on the king's side. So accordingly, black played this obvious response, queen to e7, clearing the path on the queen side, and that rook on a8 is eagerly coming on d8 with pressure on the white queen. Well, white doesn't like it, 
So he blocked the path with bishop to d2. And after the indeed castle on the queen side, he figured out that if he prematurely castle on the king side, then his king can come in a severe danger with black's immediate attack. So in the game, white thought that, okay, I'm a pawn up, why not exchange some pieces with knight to d4. So that way I can neutralize the black ongoing pressure. Here comes the first critical moment guys. I want you to pause this video and find out how you are going to respond at this position. Well, congratulations if you find knight captures d4, which is in fact the best move in this position. The point is, after bishop captures g4 and king to b8, black has created the first threat of the game, namely knight captures g4 and then deliver a fork on c2, something which white has to respond immediately. Okay, white decided to play bishop to e2, unpinning the e3 pawn, so now indeed white is threatening of a knight, and wisely so, black put the knight on a lovely e6 square. Now, as the light square bishop has been exchanged, white feel quite safe on the king side, so he indeed castle now. But the important point is, he is seriously missing out his knight on f3, which was the guardian of the h2 square. And that is the thematic loophole black walk on throughout the game. Now comes the second critical moment, guys. You know where white king is. What will be your next move? Well, I hope you do find this accurate move, h5. And as you can see, black has a very simple plan to execute, namely knight to g4 and then queen to h5, and then a launch devastation on the white king, which is not safely placed on the g1 square. For a time being, white doesn't bother about all this, and he continue with bishop to f3, putting that bishop on a lovely diagonal. But in fact, this move was the first mistake of the white camp. Here comes the first star move. And before I move on, I like you to pause this video and find out that golden move. Did you find it? Let's see, have you seen this deciding blow? Boom! <laughs> so suddenly, bishop to h2 comes into the picture, which was not at all expected by white camp. And I think you should always look out for such sacrifices when you play this aggressive gambit. Guess what? White can't take it. Why? What happens if we take? Well, here comes the simple answer. Knight to g4 and white king is completely busted. He can't play king to g3 as queen to d6 leads to the checkmate. And the same goes for the king to h3 as after knight to g5, white king will be completely humiliated. So accordingly, white has two options. Number one, bishop captures g4, and I hope everybody here knows this pattern very well, as after h captures g4, discover check, and when white king goes to the g1, yup, you got it, queen to h4, a complete destruction on the h file, and the only hope, which is to move the f pawn, completely fails due to the simple move g3 and white king is completely boxed in.
Last but not least, King to G1 doesn't provide any good solutions as after Queen to H4, the checkmate threat is there. And if White continue with Rook to E1, then after Queen captures F2 check, King to H1, and now winning blow, Rook captures G2, not only hitting the Queen, but if White try to save the Queen, then Queen to H4 leads to the checkmate. So no wonder after a long thought, White decided not to take the bishop and continue with king to h1. Okay, black says, I have done my work, sweetie. I have regained the pawn back. And now I'm simply going to retrieve to the more attacking square with bishop to e5. And you can see this pin is so annoying that in the game, white says, enough is enough. I want to play queen to e2, remove this tension. But this is the case where you are coming out from the frying pan straight into the fire. The fourth critical and in fact winning move of the game has been played here which completely stunned the white opponent. Can you find it out? To be honest, there are a lot of good moves over here, but I think black find the best killing move in this position. Are you ready? Rook captures d2. Bam! What a move! And you know what? White can't even touch that rook. The point is, if you foolishly take this rook, then after knight to e4, black is threatening to think. Number one, he is attacking the queen and the number two, but the very obvious threat is queen to h4 and checkmate the white king. So unfortunately, white has to give up the queen and in fact the game. In the game, white see that immediately, so he decided to play the move queen to b5, threatening a checkmate on b7. But this can be easily dealt with knight to d8, defending a beginner's threat. Now comes the final mistake of the game. White played rook a to d1, challenging the dangerous rook sitting on the second rank. But what he overlooked is, after c6, queen to a4, the deciding winning move by the black camp. Last time guys, I want you to pause this video and find out the winning sequence from the black camp. Okay, I'm really sure that you have find out this winning move, knight to g4 and how you're going to stop queen to h4 and checkmating the white king. Well, white has the only option, g3, but you know now what is going to happen. Yup, the another dazzling sacrifice, bishop captures g3. And after this, however white plays, his king is not going to survive for a long time. The game finished very quickly. White indeed plays f captures g3, but after rook to h2 check, king to g1 and now the simplest move in the world queen captures e3 which leads to checkmate in two moves wow what an attacking and entertaining game which clearly highlights how one should play this gambit and what sort of fun black get against the move d4 Now, before we leave, it is very important to understand what happens if white doesn't take the second pawn and try to hang on with moves such as knight to f3 or bishop to f4. The first move I want to consider is bishop to f4 
which as per my opinion probably the most critical line from the white camp and against this my recommendation is you should continue with knight to c6 pressurizing the e5 pawn if knight to f3 then bishop to g4 and the position will be transposed into the knight to f3 variation which we are going to see after this so the most critical response here is to capture on d6 and white's idea is very simple he wants to give us a weak backward pawn on d6 which you have to avoid at any cost so that is why it is very important for you to remember that in this position you have this tactical idea queen to f6 counter attacking white to soft spots now if your opponent continue with queen to c1 defending both the spots then after bishop takes d6 bishop takes d6 and the move queen captures d6 we achieve we want to do leading development and aim to castle on the opposite side so that's not an issue but the critical move is when white play the move e3 and invite us to take on b2 which i doubt any of your opponent will do it over the board anyways after this my recommendation is you should certainly grab on b2 and the sample line can run like this knight to d2 defending the rook now we are going to take on d6 and after bishop takes d6 pawn takes d6 rook to b1 and the move queen to e5 yes indeed black has a weak isolated pawn on the d6 but the good points are black has gained his pawn back and not to forget as a counterpart white also has these two weaknesses and as i have highlighted over here once your major pieces are lining up on the c file then sooner or later c pawn will be dropping off the board last but not least the second most popular choice in this positions are knight to f3 defending on e5 and not grabbing the second pawn and so far if you looking at my lectures i don't think so you have any trouble to finding out black's next move which is very obvious yup bishop to g4 getting rid of the knight and then taking your pawn back white has two ways to hang on to this pawn and let's see each by turn the first move bishop to g5 is not at all good and now you'll see the benefit of playing the move bishop to g4 as we can simply continue with queen to d7 and as of now queen is well protected black is indeed threatening to capture on e5 so that forces white to capture on d6 and after bishop captures d6 i think we have achieved what we want to do and on top white bishop is completely misplaced as black can get a tempo with either the move f6 or h6 and then g5 which gives him tremendous fast attacking prospects on the white king side so even though bishop to g5 has been recommended in some books this is not a great idea by the white camp Finally let's check out what is happening after the move bishop to f4 keep pressurizing the d6 square but against this we already know what to do yup putting pressure on e5 with knight to c6 and when white take on d6 do you remember yup this thematic counter attacking tactic queen to f6 and again queen to c1 can be successfully met with bishop captures d6 so the only critical response here is e3 and this time around as our bishop has been developed to the g4 square taking on b2 is not advisable as b7 is also weak 
So accordingly, my suggestion here is you should take on d6 and after bishop captures d6, play this powerful move, castle on the queen side. <laughs> and once we take our piece back, not only black can generate tremendous piece activity with the attack, but this position is already looking quite scary for the white camp. So more or less, this is how you should respond against all the sideline moves where white doesn't accept the second pawn. That's it guys. I hope with this lecture, now you are confident enough to play the Charlie Gambit and surprise a lot of your opponent with his attacking stuff. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment and I'll meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.